Hello everyone, my name is Ada Nifosi and I'm a lecturer in ancient history at the University of Kent. I'm a historian and I'm also an archaeologist. My research topic, well, it's um, women and children in uh, the Greco-Roman world. And last year I also wrote a book um, and it's about women in a dynastic and uh, Greco-Roman Egypt. Uh, the book is entitled uh, Becoming a Woman and Mother in Greco-Roman Egypt. My teaching is uh, uh, research-led, uh, so I update my teaching every year uh, according to the research I carry out. Um, I wrote a module called Egypt in the Classical World, for example, about the connection between Egypt and the classical world, so, and Greece, for example. And uh, I am also writing a new module on uh, the topic of Egyptian archaeology, so uh, examining different, uh, uh, several Egyptian archaeological sites, and I really look forward to teaching it. Yes, I can say that uh, my uh, teaching is research-led, but also my research is teaching-led, because uh, I get many ideas from my, my teaching, especially from the seminars, which are really thought-provoking at times, and uh, there's a very good exchange with the students. So yes, I think that teaching really helps me develop uh, world-leading research. My name is Rosie Wiles. I'm a lecturer in classical history and literature at the University of Kent. My research investigates the productions of ancient Greek tragedy and comedy and looks in particular at how costume and props create meaning in those productions. My most recent project looked at the intersection between theatre and society through props. Objects can tell us so much about how society thinks about itself, citizen identity, ideology, and by looking at those objects in their setting in society, as well as on stage, you can learn a great deal. In my research, I look at both textual and visual evidence. So here's an example of a very damaged but very important cup, which shows voting taking place in the fifth century. And it's the only piece of evidence depicting that process. My module, Athenian Power Plays, explores exactly that intersection between theatre and society. In the lectures, I share some of the most important visual evidence examined in my book. So, for example, the voting cup, the statues of the tyrant slayers, and the this grave stele, which was produced for a performer. Seminars invite fresh discussions of the familiar material and often questions posed by students can lead you to think about that evidence in a new way. The productions of Greek comedies by the Student Society have been brilliant at reminding me of just how important the dynamics of performance are for the understanding of these plays. In the lectures I in the lectures I share some of the most important visual evidence that's discussed in my book. So, for example, the voting cup, the grave stele for the performer, and this something else. Hi. I'm Christopher Burden Strevens, and I'm an ancient historian here at the University of Kent. My research focuses on Roman history in the second and first centuries BC. This is a really exciting time when politics at Rome is changing dramatically and the Roman political system was becoming increasingly unstable and fractious. By the middle of the first century BC, Rome is at the head of this vast Mediterranean empire, but there's also a lot of poverty, inequality, and a lot of social unrest too. That unrest creates tension, and it's those tensions, as I show in my research, that lead ultimately to the collapse of the Roman Republic at the end of the first century BC, and its transition into a monarchy. 
My first book explores that process and how it's described and analysed by later historians such as Cassius Dio. Cassius Dio wrote this monumental, ambitious and detailed analysis of how powerful generals like Julius Caesar rose to power and how they ultimately brought the Roman Republic to its knees. Much of my work's also focused on trying to unearth the secrets of the way in which Cassius Dio wrote the history of Rome and why he's such a useful source to us today when we want to understand the history of the rise and fall of the Roman Republic. Roman history has something for absolutely everyone and that's why I love teaching it to students so much. PC gamers, go ahead. Politics nerds, knock yourselves out. Archaeologists, done. It's not just all politics and warfare either. If you want to understand how the Romans lived and why Roman history unfurled in the way that it did, then you need to look at poetry, you need to look at ancient villas and wall art and tombstones, and you need to look at inscriptions too. Two of my favourite modules here at Kent are called The Rise of the Roman Republic and then The Crisis of the Late Republic. In these two modules, we look at all the stuff I've just described. We start in 350 BC when Rome's just a small Republican city-state and we end 300 years later when Julius Caesar's adopted son Octavian became Rome's first emperor after destroying the Republic. I especially love teaching about my research on Roman coins. Uh, coins are the billboards of the ancient world. They give a fascinating insight into how Roman politicians wanted to present themselves to the people and also the sorts of political and ideological questions that they were interested in or concerned about. Teaching is literally the best thing you can do if you want to research a new problem or a new question. I think that one of the things that you kind of forget when you really come to know and understand a topic is that most of your knowledge isn't actually obvious. You've got to start somewhere. What you know or what you come to know can sometimes seem like second nature, but it really isn't. So spending time with students and who are coming fresh to Roman history for the first time really forces you to go exploring with them and to kind of unpack things bit by bit. My Roman history undergrads ask me questions that I just don't ask myself sometimes. Like, why is that? Or how do we know that? This can really challenge you to question the assumptions that you have, and even actually to completely rethink your approach to something. We have some really spontaneous discussions and debates in class, and I think really that's the most productive and important part of learning, and the thing I love most about teaching here. Hi there, Steve Willis of the Department of Classical and Archaeological Studies at the University of Kent. Uh, I'm a field archaeologist and lecturer, and my specialisms are the Iron Age, the Celtic period, and the Roman period in Britain and Europe. One of the things that we do at Kent is we teach our students fieldwork methods. That's an option, it's not a requirement of your degree. But if you want to learn the skills and methods of field archaeology, that's what we can provide with our modules and also our placements on our training excavations. We're here today at Bourne Park because this is one of the locations where we undertook our training excavation in 2016 with the students. And it was also about research, researching a Roman villa site here at Bourne Park, just south of Canterbury. It's the only known Roman villa uh, in the hinterland of Canterbury, which is, was, of course, a Roman city. Um, and the villa lies in this area before me here, between the wooden pavilion, the trees here, and with this nail-born stream in front of us here, going round to um, the Park Lake. The villa was found here, following up from aerial photographs, it was really ground truth by geophysical survey. Studying with us at Kent, you can learn all about those survey methods using geophysical equipment. We've got all the equipment you would need to locate archaeological sites, carry out sophisticated survey, pinpoint where you want to carry out the excavations. 
the excavation is conducted here located the late Roman baths of the residential complex, including the Roman plumbing, plunge pool, hypercourse, masses of tiles, Roman well, very, very interesting site. So where our students went last year for their excavations with us were training excavation at Otford in Kent, looking at the Roman villa there, and also our excavation project in Lincolnshire, again, looking at the Roman villa all sorts of discoveries to be made. For the site here, do look at our blog, Our Neighbours the Romans. So if you Google Our Neighbours the Romans, you'll find out the story of this site and the excavation experience that the students had when they were here in 2016. A great asset of field archaeology, teaching field archaeology, alongside the classroom-based, lecture-based, practical lab work we do at the university campus is it brings the point of discovery to the students they learn the methods they are discovering things at the point of a trowel it's really exciting there's no substitute for it it brings the theory together with the practice the understanding of how the sites were laid out how the finds relate to those sites and the wider picture of how people lived in the past. We've got three programs of study. You can study ancient history, you could do classical studies, you can do archaeological and classical studies. But whichever program of study you take, you will have the opportunity to participate in these sorts of excavations, field survey, discovery modules like that. If you want to take this as a formal module, you can do.